How's it going everybody? It is Saiyan Prince and I am back again to show you guys another PlayStation Vita video. Uh, today we're going to try and do a quick tutorial on how to add PSP and PS1 games to Adrenaline to your modded PlayStation Vita. Now the reason why I'm doing this is mostly because I've noticed that a lot of games are not included on the PKGJ modded store. So I wanted to do a quick tutorial on how to add your favorite games. Maybe you have nostalgia for the games or they're just not included on PKGJ. It is possible to add them. So first and foremost, I'm going to show you guys my Vita. Okay, this is, uh, this is going to be my Vita and everything that's on it. So I've got it plugged into my PC. And again, this is on a modded Vita. This is uh, running firmware 3.65, permanent homebrew. Enzo. Now what you want to do is first off you want to make sure you've gone through all the steps to already get adrenaline. So you've got a modded Vita, you've got adrenaline, and you have a way to add files onto it via Vita shell. Okay. Once you have those things, you want to go onto your Vita and you want to make sure that hidden it shows hidden files. So see these files are originally hidden, which is why they're not uh, emboldened uh, so you want to make sure that hidden files are actually being shown and you want to find out where your PSP games are actually located in your Vita so let's say you use adrenaline regularly and you know how to do all that but this is how you would add a PSP game that is not uh, added through PKG or PKGJ so I actually have mine in somewhat of an unusual location I followed an old tutorial uh, but this is where mine are, and as you can see, I have all of my PSP games. They are uh, .iso files. That's important. All of my PSP games are right in here. Okay. Some of them have game IDs. Some of them are just named like they're supposed to be. Uh, a lot of times, you want to keep these these IDs the same. Uh, they'll show up as the game name when you when you're in your system. But you want to try and keep these the same, and I'll, I'll show you guys an example of that a little bit later. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to take your ISO, uh, you know, wherever you've gotten it from. You know, um, you can find ROMs online. I'm not going to tell you where to find them. Just Google them if you're uh, wanting to go that route. Uh, once you have your ISOs, your PSP game, what you can do is just copy it. So I'm going to just copy. I've already got this game. I'm going to go back to my Vita. Go back to where we were just at. And these are all my PSPs. So I think I'm going to add... Uh, this is uh, Marvel's Ultimate Alliance. I'm going to paste that right in there. Okay. It's going to copy over from my desktop onto my Vita. Now the PSP is very simple. Uh, once this finishes, it's going to basically be, pick it up immediately. You're going to be able to go into Adrenaline and start playing immediately. Uh, these are really easy. PSP games, they're a breeze. It's no problem at all. Uh, you have to do a little bit more work when it comes to the PS1 games because PS1 ISOs have to be converted. Uh, their bin files have to be converted into eboot.pbp files. So I'm going to go through all of that with you guys as soon as this gets done. And uh, I'm going to just pause the video and let it speed through and I'll be right back. Okay, so it just finished. And as you can see, I've got Marvel Ultimate Alliance. It is an ISO. So now when I go into my PlayStation Vita and I go into Adrenaline, this PSP game will be playable and I will be able to just play it as normal, okay? Um, and I will show that to you guys in just a bit, but while we're still here on the PC, what I wanted to do is I actually wanted to do a conversion for you guys uh, for the PS1 games because they are a little bit more complicated, but just stick with me, it's not too bad. Okay, so first off, you're going to need a program that is called PSX2PSP, okay? 
This version is version 1.4.2 and I will leave a link to this and also a written description as well. Um, I've got it right here. This is a written description on how to actually go about it. All you'd have to do is just click this here and it will start the download, uh, unpack it, and then you can launch the, uh, the firmware. Okay, and this basically does a step-by-step -step on how to do exactly what I'm about to show you, okay? So I will leave a link for that. All right, once you've got it unpacked and you've brought it up and you have your, your PlayStation 1 ISO, you want to go to that file's location. So I did Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets last. So this time, I think what I'm going to do is do the Sorcerer's Stone and I've got it here. Now again, I already have the ROM. Um, I already have the ROM, and if I if I bring this this folder up, you can see that I actually have an image in here that I can bring up. And you're, this is going to be important. You want to have an image, uh, so it's not going to just be blank. You can find any images like this online. Just Google the game you want, um, and then I would either download a PNG file or convert it to a PNG because those I've had the most success with, okay? So I already have this image. This is the image that I'm gonna use and I just wanted to show that to you guys real quick. All right, so the Q, um, I'm not exactly sure what the Q does. I know that it, I think it redirects how the bin works uh, for the original software, um, but the conversion really only requires that the bin file be converted. So. This is my Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone PS1 file. It's got a bin, it's got a Q, and it's got a PNG. Okay, I just wanted to show that to you guys real quick. Now, when you're using PSX2 PSP, it's only going to show you compatible files because that's what I've set it here as. Uh, it's only going to find compatible files. So I went to that file location, and here it is. Uh, it's the dot .bin for Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. And you're just going to open that right up. Okay, now what you'll notice is that it fills in a lot of this data here. Um, it will fill in the game title. This is what your game is going to be called. Uh, and it also will autofill the game ID unless it's some kind of like modded game or something like that, which you could go in the options and change that. Now what it's going to try and do is it's going to try and use a previous image that you've done. So I've made Mortal Kombat Trilogy in the past, so it, it remembers that. So instead of that, I'm going to go back to that same location where I had that, that image file, and I'm going to use that one instead, okay? So I've set the icon image and the background image. Now this, this is up to you guys if you want to do any of this other stuff, but I recommend against it. It's unnecessary. It's not needed, okay? Last thing you're going to need to do is you've got to make sure where your output, once it's been converted to a PBP, where do you want to put it? For me personally, I like to put it right in with the other ones. That way I don't lose it, you know, so that's me personally. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the original file, highlight it, then hit OK. Okay, so now I have the bin file. I have where the converted file is going. It has the name, the ID. This is important, so keep this in mind. The ID is important. Don't change that. Um, the icon image, the background image, and if you'd like to preview it, you can hit preview and it'll show you the game launch, the save, and then the boot process. So it'll just show you what it looks like. And it's not beautiful, but you know, you can do what you want with these images and you can change them how you like. Always click apply patches. Um, I don't know why it's probably compulsion, but uh, I, I click apply patches. I don't think it does anything if you don't click it. Um, this isn't a patched game or anything like that. So, but it doesn't hurt to click that. And then I hit convert. Now this is going to take about a minute or two. Uh, and then once it's done, I will start the video back. Okay. It just finished. It only took about 45 seconds or so. And it says done, patched, it's done. Okay, so I'm going to exit out of that, and just to make sure that I do have the converted one, I'm going to go into the original file, and there it is. I've got a new folder here with a new folder ID. Now, this is the game ID, okay, and if you click into this folder, it'll show you the eBoot. 
Now you don't want to change the names of any of these, and I know it seems kind of, kind of silly not to because you, you're not going to be able to just look in your games files and be able to tell that this is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, right? Um, but what I've discovered is, and this is something I've seen a lot on Reddit, people posting about, if you change the game ID name and you go to put it into your PS Vita system, it will, a lot of the times, not all the time, have trouble recognizing what the game is, and it'll give you a corrupt data message, okay? It can still be played by using the Adrenaline Bubble Manager, but it's just best not to change this, all right? So let's go ahead and copy this, just this entire folder. We're going to copy it directly into my Vita. Now, again, I've got these in a specific location, PSPMU. And then it is in, I believe, PSP game. And these are all my PS1 games. I know that seems silly that it's in PSP and game, but like I said, I followed an old tutorial. It, 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 I know where they're at, and it, it doesn't mess with anything. You know, it, I don't want to change it and mess something up at this point. So just wanted to show you guys. Now, some of these I have named. You know, I've na these are all ones that I've made, and I've named them and not had any issues. Um, but if you get in your game and you've and you've renamed your folder or something else like I've done here and you see that it says corrupted data, um, it's probably because you renamed it. So let's go ahead and paste in our Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. OK, and that just finished. And there it is. It is the eBoot and it is in the correct location. So now for the next step, we need to get on the PlayStation Vita and make sure that the game is working properly okay so let's get back on the vita now okay and back on the vita i just want to make sure that everything transferred over properly so i'm going to go to my ux0 which is my sd to vita then i'm going to make sure that it is in PSPMU. now we had done the um, ultimate alliance little bit earlier there it is so that was what we did first so we added that that's the PSP game and then we also went in and added the Harry Potter game which is in here I would assume but it is still named its title ID I believe it's this one yes yes it is that's from today okay so there's the Harry Potter game for PS1 and the Ultimate Alliance for PSP. Now what we can do is exit out of Vita Shell. Sorry, that's my theme. I'll turn that down a little bit. So you guys can hear me a little bit better. Okay, then I'm going to go into Adrenaline. Launch Adrenaline. And this is the PSP interface. Okay, then you can scroll to game, then go down to memory stick to see all of the PS1 and PSP games that you have downloaded directly to your system. If you have a lot, it could take a second. So there's Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone that we just added. And also the Ultimate Alliance for PSP. So let's test Harry Potter first because this is the PS1 game that we had to convert to eBoot. And if you noticed it was the it was the images that I had put on there a little bit earlier. I'm sorry for my camera constantly trying to adjust it. It's not a professional setup by any means. So I appreciate you guys bearing with me here. But as you can see, the game seems to work just fine. You know, uh, the buttons seem to work. And what I will do is I will go in and make a bubble for this. And once I make a bubble uh, and see your saves and stuff, you know, if you have, if you previously played this game, which I redid this for you guys. So I've already already have a save at about 12% on here. So it did keep my safe. 
Um, but yeah, so that, that looks good. We're going to exit out of this. So I hit the PlayStation button and then exit it out. And then we are going to test the PSP game as well. And like I said, guys, this is this is super easy. I know a lot of this for most people, they uh, they they're gonna know how to do this already. But one of the most common questions I get on my channel is, how did you add this game? You know, insert game here. It's not on PKG. And uh, so I wanted to go through a little tutorial. I realized there's not a I hadn't seen a tutorial on this, and that's really the only time that I try and do tutorials is if I get online and I can't really find something readily available or something easy to understand. I like to try and take care of it myself. So, and the PSP game seems to work fine. So this is ultimate Alliance for PSP. Pretty cool. seems, seems to work fine. Okay. I'm going to exit out of that. And one last thing that I'm going to show you guys, um, this is something I do for every one of my games that I get that I'm interested in. Uh, what I'll do, let's go ahead and exit this by double tapping the PlayStation button. What I will do is I will go in and I will make a bubble by going to the Adrenaline Bubble Manager. Uh, I'll leave a link for this as well if I can find it, but I believe you can get this from Auto Plugin. So if you have Auto Plugin, I think you can just download this. But it is called Adrenaline Bubbles Manager, so you can just search that, add it on here. This is to take all of your adrenaline games, or the ones of your choosing, you know, you can cherry pick if you like. And it's going to go through, it's going to load all of my adrenaline games that I have on the unit. And then it's going to allow me to make a bubble for them on the live area. So what you can do is actually, you can hit square, and that will mark it. And then I'm going to hit square on this one, Ultimate Alliance, so now we've got them both marked. And then I'm just going to hit X. It's going to ask me to name them. That's fine with me. That is also fine. And it's going to take a couple of seconds and go through, and it's going to make these bubbles for me. And it's uh, choosing the images that I already have loaded up from earlier. So that's why those images are, you know, kind of important. I mean, you could you could do it without them, but... I just think it makes it look a lot nicer. So, and it's working on the second one for the Ultimate Alliance, the PSP. And it's almost done. Okay, so see now they're in green. So it shows that I have a bubble made for them already, or now. So I'm going to close this out, and if I go to my next page, there are my two new bubbles, which I can now launch directly from them, which I'm not going to. You get the idea. I could launch the games directly from here. So now what I could do is I could take them and I could, you know, I could put them in a folder. So like I have my PS1 games in a certain, you know, in a certain spot. So you could just put them in a folder, or just whatever. So that's a... That's the gist of it, guys. That's the gist of it. Um, if you guys like the video or this helped you out at all, uh, please just leave a like. Maybe maybe consider subscribing. And uh, if you guys have any more ideas for another video, just let me know. Okay, thanks.